What's that place you've always wanted to try? While well, you're there, sharing plates with just one bite. Or on second thought, maybe not sharing. It's that good. When you're with Amex, it's not if it's going to happen, but when. American Express. Don't live life without it. Hey, it's Christine, host of Storyworthy. Whether you loved or hated it, who doesn't remember high school? Who went to their high school reunion? On today's show, actor Dave Keckner takes us back to his high school days in Tipton, Missouri. Where I'm from, like I said, small town, not a lot to do. So one of the events uh, in your life in high school, when you're a senior, uh, you go paint the bridge, the uh, railroad underpass, about a mile outside of town. You paint your high school year there. And I'm out there by myself trying to keep one eye on traffic and shake these spray paint cans. And also, I'm trying to, I, it's dark, I can't see anything. And then I'm, I've got my, uh, my phone, my iPhone out, and I'm trying to push the, uh, the light, uh, the, 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 the whatever, flashlight app, but my battery's dying. This week on Storyworthy, actor Dave Keckner tells us all about his high school reunion. Hi, my name is David Keckner, and you're listening to Storyworthy. You must be smart. Welcome to Storyworthy. My name is Christine Blackburn, and I'm coming to you from Wondery Sunset Studio in West Hollywood, California. I am so glad you guys tuned in today. Whether you're a longtime fan of the show or a new listener, welcome to Storyworthy. I hope you guys had a chance to listen to last week's episode with Todd Glass. If you didn't, go back and listen to that episode. It's titled Pot Cookies, so you know what it's about. It's about pot and cookies. Pot in the cookies. Anyway, it's fabulous. You've got to hear it. But for today, today's show is brought to us from the one and only Dave Keckner. Now, Dave is an amazing actor and comedian, and I know you've seen him in a million different things like Anchorman and Talladega Nights. And today his story is called High School Reunion. He talks about growing up in Tipton, Missouri, where he graduated with only 78 kids. Now, that is a small school. I, mean, I graduated with 190 kids, but 78 is unbelievable. But this story makes me think about my own high school reunion, as I'm sure it'll make you think about your high school reunion. And here's the thing. We didn't have a high school reunion until the 19th year. So there was no five-year, no 10-year, no 20-year, just a 19th year high school reunion. And that's because in our junior year, we voted for the football team to be the class officers when we were seniors. Now, I wrote about this in my Huffington Post blog, which you can look at. It's called, This Election Reminds Me of High School. And basically what happened is we all voted in the football team almost like a joke, and then they won. They won the election, not the people that should have won the election who'd been like literally running the class for the last, you know, the previous five years. No, we picked this guy, Dave McWilliams. And so when it came time to have our reunions, our high school reunions, We didn't get to have any because Dave McWilliams went up to the high school for our five-year reunion. You know, he's like, I'm the class president of 1983. That's right. I'm old. And we sold candy bars, and I need that candy bar money. And the principal of the school, Thomas Greenway, gave him the $750, and then Dave McWilliams went out and bought a used car. You see, that's what I'm saying, people. That's what happens when you vote in the wrong people, and I think you know what I'm talking about. But the ramifications could be a lot worse than not having a high school reunion. All right, you guys, before Dave's story, I did want to remind you to follow Storyworthy on Twitter and Instagram at Storyworthy. And don't forget to head over to our website, storyworthypodcast.com, before you shop on Amazon. If you click on the Amazon link, then we get a few pennies and it costs you nothing. Okay, let's get right to our story. Now, Dave Keckner, like I said, is an actor, and he's also a writer and a producer, and he's best known for his role as Todd Packer on The Office and Champ Kind from Anchorman, and Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues. He's also been seen in Talladega Nights, Get Smart, Extract, Thank You for Not Smoking, A Haunted House, and Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. And on television, you can currently see Dave right now on ABC's The Goldbergs. He also voices reoccurring characters on Fox's American Dad and Netflix's F is for Family and All Hail King Julian. What I'm saying is this man works all the time. You can find him on Twitter at Dave Keckner and over at his website, DaveKeckner.com. All right, you guys, here he is right now, Dave Keckner. 
My name is David Keckner. I'm from a very small town in Missouri called Tipton. Uh, the population my entire life growing up was 1,999, and then it jumped to 2004 during the 1970 census. Um, I think the 1980 census, it went to like 2034. And then lo and behold, when I was, uh, for, I went back like after the year 2000, and it jumped to 3,200 something. And I thought, what? Tipton's growing. Apparently, all they did was they, they moved the city limits to include the prison. But my, my story does concern my hometown. Where I'm from, like I said, small town, not a lot to do. So one of the events uh, in your life in high school, when you're a senior, uh, you go pr uh, paint the bridge, the uh, railroad underpass, about a mile outside of town. You paint your high school year there. I graduated in 1980, so that year we went out uh, and we painted 80 rules. Me and about five of my buddies stole paint from my dad's manufacturing uh, uh, plant and painted 80 rules out there because nothing rhymes with 80. You know, every year would have 79 <laughs> is divine, 78 <laughs> is great, 80 rules. So that's what we painted. <laughs> I go home. We did that successfully. You know, we were whatever. I was 17. Others were 18. We got someone to buy his beer. We waited. I, I know we did it during the winter. It was cold and I got paint on my uh, coat. And at that point, I remember making up this elaborate story that I never had to tell my parents, like, why is there a little bit of red paint on your coat? And I was <laughs> making all these guys over there like, hey, listen, if anybody asks, here's what happened. So anyway, cut to 30 years later, when I go back from my 30-year high school reunion, I go back, and I notice that the underpass is no longer, that's no longer a tradition. It's like, what have you guys, what's going on here? What's happening? Where's the, where's the school spirit? Why aren't you vandalizing things <laughs> like we did in a show of, like, pride? And then I also realized that, that year that my, and when I graduated, like, this, the town's so small, it's not a private school, we graduated uh, 78 kids. Yeah, that's how big it was. And the year I came back from my 30-year high school reunion, my niece graduated, and she graduated with a class of 42. Now, here's the messed up part. I was informed that of those 42 kids, 24, as they say, walked without actually receiving a diploma. So they walk across the stage, only half graduate, actually actually earned enough credit in a small town. So I thought, what is happening here? And I, I like that. I'd observe that they're no longer painting the underpass. There was no, you know, hey, year 2000 is... Ah, nothing rhymes with it. <laughs> it is grouse-like. Um, so that night, what we do when we go back for your high school reunion, and from my town, what they do is they celebrate every five or ten years. It's not every year like normal schools do. So every ten years, you usually get together. So I go back, and like that, it's a small town. On Friday night's the real reunion. Friday night, you'll rent a small gathering place in town, and you'll you and your classmates will gather. So I think we had, I don't know, 20... Five and the weird, the weird thing is a lot of the locals don't come. Like I'm traveling from Los Angeles because I want to see everybody. This is the 30. Like come on, guys. So I, you know, I want. I don't know why, but I wanted it to be important. I wanted it to be special. And, and when they don't all show up, you're like, ah, we even started a Facebook page. No one cared. So I had mentioned during our, our, our early evening, we had dinner and we we're all talking and blah blah. Then we're dancing. Um, that hey, let's go paint the underpass because they don't do it anymore. And so these guys thought I was crazy, but the more liquored up we got, I got about four guys to go along with it. And lo and behold, someone had spray paint in town, which you know is like you can't just go out and buy spray paint and tipped in at, at <laughs> 2 o'clock in the morning. So we went out, and it's summertime. It's like May. It's May. It's, it's Memorial Day weekend, I believe. And we went out, and we painted 80 rules at the underpass. And we were all so happy, blah, 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 blah. Now, while in the process of doing this, there are two small highways that intersect right there at the underpass. And so we had one guy kind of looking out, and the rest of us were painting, spray painting the underpass, <laughs> 80 rules. Then a car starts coming. Now, they're not going to be looking at us anyway, but one of my buddies runs back toward the car and trips in a ditch and really hurts his leg. And I was like, how ridiculous is that, right? <laughs> Anyway, we did our job, and my wife thought we were all stupid and crazy, and she's right. All right, that's what happened then. We're all so proud of ourselves. Now, cut to, I go back that same year, uh, later that year, actually, the beginning of the next year, my buddy's daughter was getting married. It was the first time I went to a wedding as a bud, as a friend of the parents, which is a, like, wow, this is okay. I'm, I'm getting older. Great. So it's New Year's. It's cold. We bring the whole family down. This is before our fifth daughter was born, our fifth child who was a daughter. So go back with all four kids. I noticed what had happened then, about two months after we'd painted A rules that previous uh, summer, 
uh, they did construction on that bridge. And so our handiwork got whatever, concreted over, painted over. I was like, guys, I understand that. I called a week before and I said, guys, we're going to have to paint the bridge again. Now, my buddies were like, I'm not going to have anything to do with this. Well, I told one of my buddies, hey, get me some paint. Just have spray paint ready for me. So he agreed, he agreed to that. But here's what he did. He went to a different town to buy the paint because they're so afraid they're going to get caught, right? So I get to town. He's got the paint for me. I'm like, great. I'm still trying to corral them. Now, one of my buddies who had done some of the painting years before, his daughter's getting married, so I know he's not going to be part of it. I'm still trying to get some other guys to go along with me. All right, so we go to the wedding. It's a, it's a New Year's Eve wedding. Go to the wedding, go to the reception, and in Tipton, these things last long. Then my wife is tired, like, let's go home. The kids are going to get up. I'm like, I'm staying out. You're like, you're an idiot. So, of course, I stay out. I go to a party. Out. Oh, because it's New Year's Eve. There's a New Year's Eve party out at a barn out, outside of town. <laughs> so I keep charging through the night. I've got my spray paint in my rented car or whatever it is, SUV. I'm still intent on doing this thing. So I go, and now it's about, I don't know, 4, 5 in the morning. Why I'm out in this small town, gosh knows so I go out and I decide I'm still going to do it. So I go, I take the spray paint. I'm shaking them up. I am trying to spray paint 80 rules, right? So now it is 11 degrees outside. It's really cold. And I'm out there by myself trying to keep one eye on traffic and shake these spray paint cans. And also I'm trying to, I, it's dark. I can't see anything. And then I'm, I've got my, uh, my phone, my iPhone out, and I'm trying to push the, uh, the light uh, the, the, the whatever flashlight app, but my battery's dying. So I can't see. So I'm out there. The paint is freezing up. I'm shaking it. I'm doing a pretty poor job. And I just do whatever. Okay. So I kind of paint 80 rules. Then I see a car coming. I run back to my car and guess what? I fall into the same ditch that my buddy had done <laughs> earlier. So then I go home like, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, look, I, I don't advocate drinking and driving. You should never do it. And I'm going to make an excuse. It's a really small town. There is no traffic. Still stupid, 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 stupid. But in my immature mind, like that was okay. Go home. My wife is just like, what time did you get home? Here's what my wife sees the next morning. There is blood on the pillow. She lets me sleep in. But because apparently as I fell into the ditch, I hit my head as well. She's looking at me like, what time did you come home? I wake up. Her husband has blood on the pillow. And what did you do? She knew I went and painted the bridge. She's like, oh, my God. What an idiot. Now, my foot hurts really bad, too. I'm like, wow, what, what happened? So, but the problem is I didn't finish the 80 rules as I figured out. So the next night is the last night we're going to be in town. So I want to see my buddies again because I never get to see them, but once a year. And so I go out to a party. My wife said, I'm not going out because I said, I'm going to finish painting the bridge. So I go to my buddy's place. We have a few cervezas, not as many as the night before. And I say, guys, I still got the paint. I've got to finish the 80 rules, and you guys have to come with me. Guess who went? Nobody. So I went, and the next night, I finished the job. Okay, you guys, I am so sorry that I laughed the whole way through that. Like, I tried to edit some of that out, but I couldn't because it was hilarious. Also, I wasn't the only one in the room. There were a couple people in the room. But I'll tell you something. I, when I hear Dave's story, I can completely picture the entire scene because, I mean, I'm from Pittsburgh, but the weather specifically is very similar. And he talks about, you know, the cold, and he talks about shaking that can of spray paint. And I could just feel how cold that nozzle would be. And then, of course, the boredom in a small town, you know? I mean, that doesn't change. If you're growing up in a small town, you know what I'm talking about. And I left my hometown to come out to Los Angeles permanently when I was about 30. And now when I go back, it's, it's so crazy because on one hand, like, the dynamics never change, and I miss that. And on the other hand, I'm so happy that I did move. I don't know. Everybody has a story, right? All right, you guys, i got to wrap it up right about now. I want to thank our storyteller, Dave Keckner. Again, you can find Dave over on Twitter, at Dave Keckner. And why not tweet him and let him know how much you enjoyed his story on StoryWorthy. And then you can follow me over there as well, at StoryWorthy. And join us next week on StoryWorthy for a story by comedian Heather McDonald. 
there's been one story that I've hinted at or talked about, and that is my tumultuous relationship with my sister. And I've never told it. I've never written about it in my books. I don't talk about it in my stand-up. But it takes quite a while to tell. Don't miss Heather McDonald next week on Storyworthy. All right, I want to thank everybody over here at Wondery today, including our sound engineer, Sergio Enriquez. Thanks, Sergio. And on behalf of our storyteller, one more time, Dave Keckner. My name is Christine Blackburn saying, make it a story worthy week. Thanks for joining us on the Story Worthy Podcast. We'll be back next week with all new stories. Subscribe to Story Worthy on iTunes and visit the Story Worthy website at storyworthypodcast.com. place you've always wanted to try while well, you're there sharing plates with just one bite or on second thought maybe not sharing it's that good when you're with amex it's not if it's going to happen but when american express don't live life without it membership fees apply after free trial cancel any time can i be real for a second that goal you have to exercise and eat better you really can do it but nobody is going to do it for you And nobody has to, because you can do it if you have the right tools and a community that cares about helping you get results. And that's us, Beachbody. It's as convenient as your TV or laptop, but you need to decide that you're worth it. Let us help you succeed. Here's how. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great.